Can I get out of your way? Your attention, please. Welcome, uh, Governor Gregoire, and our many distinguished uh, guests. We're all, <clears throat> for those of you who don't know me, I'm Don, Don Thomas, a former director of the clinical service here at the Hutchinson Center. We're here today to witness the signing of the Life Sciences Discovery Bill into law. As many of you know, the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Center and the University of Washington and many institutions around the state have made and continue to make many contributions to the prevention, the diagnosis, and the treatment of cancer and other important diseases. This Life Sciences Bill is a major accomplishment for the state of Washington. It will assure our young investigators that Washington is a good place to live and a good place to be scientists to carry out the work that will benefit the residents of the state of Washington and of the nation and the world. I would like to ask uh, Governor, former Governor, Gary Locke to make some comments. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Thomas, for the introduction and for hosting us uh, here at the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center. And uh, to all the staff here, thank you very much for your great work and all that you do to improve the quality of life for people not just in the Pacific Northwest but all around the world. Dr. Thomas is uh, one, of our, one of the pride and joys of the state of Washington, a Nobel Prize winner, but I also want to acknowledge another person who was recently uh, uh, awarded the Nobel Prize, uh, also from Fred Hutch, and that's uh, Dr. Linda Buck. Dr. Buck, why don't you please stand up and be acknowledged as well. Thank you. The incredible talent that we have in the Pacific Northwest is one of our strengths talent and great progress in medical discoveries and medical research. Indeed, so much of what we take for granted in our daily lives in terms of medicine have, been, uh, have originated from the University of Washington and spin-offs from the University of Washington and great institutions, including uh, bone marrow transplant here at the uh, Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center, uh, diabetes, uh, 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 ultrasound, just ultrasound that we use to, to see the babies in their mother's womb to kidney dialysis. All of that because we have great institutions of learning as well as great research institutions. And the challenge for us several years ago as a group of us came together was how should we distinguish and support our growing biotech industry that is making incredible advances every single day? And what can we do to help our biotech industry grow? a biotech industry that has pioneered cures and treatments for so many diseases and improved the quality of life for people around the world. And which has also created thousands and thousands of good paying jobs in the state of Washington. Well, I remember almost three years ago, we met in the office of Madrona Venture Partners with uh, Chuck Hirsch and along with Ed Lazowska of the University of Washington, Lee Hartwell, Lee Hood, uh, and a staff member from the governor's office, a guy named Fred Morris. Uh, and we were thinking, how can we distinguish this region from the other great biotech regions of the, of the country, the Raleigh Triangle, Silicon Valley, uh, Route 128 with Harvard and MIT. And our strength is that we have great institutions of research, uh, such as the University of Washington, WSU, Battelle, and great medical research centers like the Fred Hutch, as well as many other biomedical uh, companies like Targeted Genetics and Immunex and now Amgen uh, and Zymogenetics. 
We also realized that we needed to put ourselves on the map, and we could do that by putting together our strengths of biomedical research and information technology and really focus on what some people call bioinformatics. Well, it takes sometimes many years for an idea to come to reality, and this is an example of that. And the idea was that we would take the future tobacco settlement dollars, that would uh, the bonus dollars that come to the state of Washington because of the great work of our current governor and past Attorney General Christine Gregoire, where the state of Washington will be will be receiving hundreds of millions of dollars over the next several years, starting in the year 2008. And let's dedicate that money to a nonprofit agency that can also bring in private foundation money and use the combined sum of money to provide grants for promising research all around the state. Um, and I want to thank uh, people like uh, uh, Shan Mullen and Laura Powell, who kind of headed up a, a task force to really convince the stakeholders and the industry people and the legislators about the merit of this idea. We called it Bio 21, but it's now called the Life Sciences Discovery Fund, and it's only fitting that this entire effort is becoming reality under the watch of Governor Gregoire, because indeed she was the lead attorney who enabled us to get this uh, tobacco settlement and enabled the state of Washington to receive these hundreds of millions of dollars in bonus funds, and it's uh, fitting that it's under her watch that this uh, legislation came together with bipartisan support in the last few days of the legislature, thanks to her great leadership, and that she's here to sign this into law, creating a fund that will help advance the treatment and, and cure for diseases and improve the quality of life for people all around the world, and at the same time put the mark on the state of Washington as truly a state of innovation, of research, of intellectual capital, and one that is committed uh, to creating thousands of jobs here in the state of Washington as well. Thank you all very much. Brown, Senator from Spokane and Senate Majority Leader, and uh, I've just got to say thanks to both of our former governors and, and all the people here today. Anyone who's been through the process of a piece of legislation knows that every piece of legislation is a, is a saga in and of itself. Um, from the very beginning of the idea, to the drafting, to the redrafting and the redrafting, and uh, then through the entire political process with all the hurdles that are built in. And this one was uh, no disappointment in saga material because it took us until the uh, literally the end of the legislative session to actually get kind of the cliffhanger vote in the Senate, uh, just the bare 25 votes uh, needed to um, repel uh, some unfriendly amendments and uh, pass the final bill into law. And I got to also say that um, in addition to all the people that came together around the idea and the momentum that made this happen, um, staff and uh, citizens. Um, I'm going to give some special credit to Governor Gregoire because she worked, she worked the bill very hard from the beginning of session to the end. Um, she was on the Senate floor so much that last week that <laughs> every time she got there I was like, okay, what are we going to do now about trying to get this bill up on the Senate floor? And she helped uh, procure the final momentum that pushed it over the top. And so it's just an honor to be here. Uh, and to, to know that there's this great irony in tobacco money that's going to go into um, searching for things that will relieve human suffering and ad advance the frontiers of human knowledge. And there's something very satisfying about the way the circle moves around like that. And so I'm so pleased to be here with all of you today to share that. Um, and uh, again, a special thanks. Governor Gregoire for the great work she did in, uh, in leading us through this process. And it was my pleasure and honor to, to sponsor the bill. Thank you. I am uh, Representative Jeff Morris and uh, the House of Representatives Chair of the Technology, Energy, and Communications Committee. And we uh, worked on the legislation in the House for quite some time, wringing our hands as, the, as we were waiting for the bill to get out of the Senate, actually towards the end of the session. I want to recognize some of the uh, folks that were key in getting this legislation out of the House. Uh, Representative Phyllis uh, Kenny, 
chair of the Higher Education Committee, Representative Jim McIntyre, chair of the Finance Committee, and a, and a Tech Committee member, Mark Eriks from uh, Bothell. We're all keen on getting the House uh, legislation passed. You know, I, was, I had the privilege a couple of years ago with working with Governor Locke on keeping Boeing aer aerospace manufacturing here in the state of Washington and chairing the caucus task force to keep that important segment of our economy here in Washington state. This package is as important as that Boeing package was to keep aerospace manufacturing, to keep our lead in uh, the cluster that we have in the area of biotechnology in the United States and in the world. And I can't stress that enough. Uh, Representative McIntyre can tell you better than I, but uh, one of the reasons that we're leading the economic recovery nationally for the first time in our state's history, and Oregon's still tra uh, trailing, is because we've diversified our economy and we've made investments in areas, areas like in technology at the University of Washington, Washington State University, and the research and the jobs have spun off from, from those institutions into real jobs are what's uh, making us a national leader and not a follower. The uh, Governor Locke called, uh, mentioned the state of innovation. We are an R&D state. We are a state that very much depends upon new technology, changing technology to keep our position in the world. And that can be done without legislators that are engaged with the executive branch and the private sector to know and keep in front of the changes that are happening because they're happening so quickly. And government has such a hard time keep, keeping up with those changes. And especially in hard fi financial times, this is the single largest investment we've made in a specific area in the history of our state as well. So I want to salute uh, Governor Locke with his vision and working with House Democrats and getting this initial uh, initiative started with the Bio 21 group. And I in particular want to salute Governor Gregoire's work with personally lobbying the bill in the Senate to get it out of the Senate towards the end. Uh, it was that personal visit, the personal talking to senators, I think, got it out and got the uh, bill to her desk. And I want to salute her effort to actually uh, put this uh, critical piece of legislation into our state's uh, portfolio of economic development. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. It's a great pleasure to welcome all of you to uh, Seattle, and in particular to the South Lake Union neighborhood. Uh, Governor Gregoire, I want to join uh, the others who have spoken in recognizing your leadership during this session. Earlier this week, we had the opportunity to celebrate the transportation package that uh, was passed and will save lives in our state. Uh, and today, we're celebrating another effort that you made very clear was a priority and needed to get done this session and that's the Life Sciences Discovery Fund. It also will save lives, although it may take slightly longer uh, than the viaduct and, and other safety projects on our highways. But it will be nonetheless a huge step forward for the state of Washington and, I dare to say, for people around the world. Uh, we have, in a good sense, a perfect storm uh, happening here in Seattle. We have the presence of great research institutions, uh, led by uh, the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center, who's hosting us here today in this wonderful campus that they've had rise in the uh, South Lake Union neighborhood. Uh, no greater force than the University of Washington and the billion dollars a year of research that they do, two-thirds of which is dedicated to the life sciences, making it a powerful economic and healing engine uh, in our state. Uh, the Seattle Biomedical Research Institute, which is also located here in South Lake Union. The Institute for Systems Biology, which is on the other side of the lake. Uh, we have wonderful research institutions. And in fact, if you look around the country at other uh, hubs of research, Boston, uh, the Research Triangle, San Diego, San Francisco, we are every bit the equal of each of those regions. And what we have not done as well as those other areas is we haven't figured out how to attract to that research the great companies that then take it and turn it into products that will uh, solve many of these uh, uh, life sciences conundrums. But we're learning. And the resources that are provided by this fund will help us to catch up and pass those other great metropolitan areas. We are today fifth in biotech employment. Our goal in 10 years is not to be fourth or third or even second. Our goal is to be number one. And the legislature, uh, and Governor Gregoire and the pioneering work, uh, Governor Locke, that you did will help to make that happen, and I am very pleased to celebrate that with you today. Thank you. I think the mayor just challenged all the researchers to a race. <laughs> we'll, we'll see if we can get more discoveries out before 
the completion of the Alaska Way Viaduct. Let's see if we can do that. Well, on behalf of the, I'm Mark Emmert. I'm president of the University of Washington. On behalf of the university and Washington State and all the higher education community, uh, we are absolutely delighted to be a part of this ceremony today. For the members of the legislature that are here and governor, I think that this bill sends a message loud and clear to the researchers, the scientists, the biomedical community, the biotech community all around the country that the state of Washington has no interest in playing second fiddle to anyone in these fields of research and work. That we are open for business and we're going to compete with anyone, anytime, any place in this realm. The University of Washington, the Fred Hutch, all of the institutions that have been mentioned today do remarkably good work today. But with the addition of this fund and the capacity to leverage those dollars even further to have the impact that we're going to see in the next 5, 10, 15 years, I think is going to be quite extraordinary. The fact that we're using tobacco money, tobacco money brought to the state by you, Governor, to this end, I think is, a, a, as, as the Senator said, a remarkable, wonderful irony. We're absolutely delighted this has happened. Thank you for everyone who worked hard on this bill. We know it was difficult. We know there was a lot of drama and trauma around it. Uh, but we promise one thing to all of you that worked so hard on this, Governor. We promise to make you all proud. We promise to use each and every dollar that comes forth as effectively as can possibly be done to use it for the good of the state of Washington and beyond. So thank you very, very much. for coming today. Thank you for hosting us uh, very much. We really appreciate it. Um, and I, I have to say, uh, I really do think this is a historic day. Um, I feel it personally, and I look out here, and I wanted to single out some people, but as I look around the room, it's just impossible. Literally everybody in this room has been a key player in bringing this day forward and making it possible. So my hat goes off to you. Thank you very, very much for all that you did to make this happen. Congratulations to each and every one of you. Um, I want to I want to say, Mr. Mayor, uh, I love your I love your plans for the city of Seattle. Uh, they are terrific, and we're ready as a partner with you uh, as a state to make those plans a reality. The legislation uh, and uh, the reason I'm so excited about it is because it's a dad gum visionary. <laughs> I mean, I, I, no disrespect, no disrespect, please, to those legislators present and those not here. But when's the last time someone can think when the legislature did something visionary out decades. They're so consumed and rightfully so thinking how do I get through this session to the next session that it's very difficult to be that visionary. So this is a momentous occasion. It is about a vision uh, and they have just done a terrific job. It's a vision about uh, future health care delivery to the citizens of our great state, this nation and the world. It's a vision about new industries and new employers here in Seattle and across our state, ones that, frankly, folks, I don't think you and I can even imagine today what tomorrow will bring. It's about a vision for our students and our future students and researchers at our universities and our laboratories throughout the state. It's a vision about creating the next generation of healthcare research to predict and prevent some of our most dreaded diseases. It's about a vision of wellness connected to that by making sure that our agriculture is all that it can be in terms of the highest quality for that wellness of our citizens. And it's about making sure that we have ourselves in a competitive nature in terms of the global economy in which we all now participate. Creation of the Life Sciences Discovery Fund sends a huge signal, not just to the citizens of our great state, but the country and around the world. As has been stated, we're going to be second to none. We, the train, as I tr kept trying to say to so many legislators, the train is not leaving. It has left. And we are either on this thing, and it is going at a very fast pace, or we're not. And now is the time to act, and they did. Uh, that bill, 5881, uh, 5581, establishes, as, as Governor Locke said, $350 million as a base fund. Our goal is to have it matched and create a billion dollar investment, at least in the life sciences in the state of Washington so that we can take the benefit, as I think that the senator put it so well, and have it bring full circle. Uh, and, you know, I've, I've often thought we're doing great things with the annual payment that we get from the tobacco settlement. 
Uh, I know many of you may know this. I mean, it is a basic funding mechanism now for the basic health plan that provides for 100,000 of our uninsured in this state. But it also is an investment in anti-tobacco smoking programs, which has led to the largest decline in youth smoking in the history of the state, and we're one of the top in the entire nation. That's ensuring quality of life, saving lives, and investing in our future. Uh, from Puget Sound to Pullman. It's the other thing I love about this. It pulls our economy together. I, I hear all too often it's about economic development on one side of the state or the other. This is an opportunity for us to say there is no divide here. We're pulling our economy together, and literally we can do that. We, we are blessed, absolutely blessed, with the Nobel Prize winners that we have here in our presence. Uh, and those that are not here with us today. The Fred Hutch Cancer Center is second to none around the world and to think of all that it is accomplishing. We are the home to global health leaders and strategies like the Seattle, Seattle Biomedical Research Institute and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. From Lee Hood's work on the DNA at the Institute for Systems Biology to Washington State University's literally cutting edge, which I saw last Saturday up close and personal, research on agriculture for tomorrow, to path-breaking work around the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory in the Tri-Cities, we, as Washington State, are well positioned to maintain our leadership. I can't thank all the companies or all the foundations, all the wonderful researchers, all the wonderful lobbyists, all the visionaries, <laughs> all the staff. I mean, you're all here. I see you. Uh, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, we are the home to such tremendous companies and schools and individuals, and that's why it's a perfect marriage for us to take advantage of what we have and build uh, our future. Right now, in the laboratories across our state, the future is being discovered by men and women who have a vision about that future, who believe that we can have less disease, that we can have a higher quality of life, that we can reduce the cost of health care, that we can have wellness through agriculture, that we are going to take the talent of Washingtonians and harness it towards all that vision. Let me give you a very real example that's a most recent example. Uh, again, a private sector, a public sector, entrepreneurial kind of relationship. Uh, how it paid off here in jobs and the economy and in health. And that is less than a month ago, a new biotechnology company located as a result of some research that uh, was spun off from here at the Fred Hutch uh, that will treat our high-risk, critically ill patients. That's just one of many examples, but it's the most recent example I can think of. This legislation will answer some very important questions. Is Washington State going to continue to lead the next generation in health and agricultural research? Is Washington State going to rise up from 49th in the country in terms of public investment in scientific research. Mr. President, that is an embarrassment to us, and we're determined that with these two fantastic research institutions, we deserve to be at the top, not close to the bottom. Is Washington State going to promote our predictive and preventive medicine vision of health care, wellness through agriculture, to reduce our health care costs, to create more jobs, to expand opportunities for our students in research universities, my friends, today, our legislature, all of you combined, have given a resounding yes to all of that. I want to give a special thanks to Governor Locke, a gentleman who stood up as governor of the state of Washington with a vision, brought people in this room and not in this room today together, and said, you know what, we can leave a real legacy. And yes, he looked at the tobacco dollars, but it's all about a legacy that we can leave to his children, our children, and so I want to thank you, Governor Locke, for being visionary, for being tenacious, for bringing us together with a vision for the state of Washington. Thank you, Governor. I'm going to give a special thanks to, to uh, Senator Brown. Uh, I can give the thanks that she got it out 25, uh, 24. I can give a, a thanks that she got it to the floor for a vote. And in case you don't know how difficult that is, it can be very difficult. I'm going to give her a special thanks because I had to have been the biggest pest on the face of the earth. And I remember one time, some of you know Marty Brown. And as we walked through the doors again, Marty says, now whatever you do, first say to her, 
thanks for all your help, and then get into what you have planned. So I walk up to Lisa and I go, okay, here, here's what we got, here are my books. I go, oh, excuse me, pardon me. Thanks, Lisa, for what you're doing. Now, here's what we got, here's what we got. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa, you are terrific. Thank you very much. Representative Morris and your colleagues that are with you, you here today, you were a champion in the House. You got it cleaned up for us. It came out nice and clean. We were able to make it happen in the Senate. Thank you. I appreciate all your hard work and vision. <laughs> so enough said. It is truly a remarkable moment. I thank again each and every one of you in the, in the room. I'm going to take a point of personal privilege um, as I came here uh, on January 12th, I began a relationship with a man in my policy shop. And I got to tell you, he and I spent many, many hours together. And I saw this gentleman's personality up one side and down the other. I can find no one more patient with me, more, no more tenacious than me. Uh, and I want to thank you, Mark Baldwin, for doing a great job. <laughs> that, my friends, I'm delighted and happy that uh, we can celebrate this together, and it is a day of celebration. Congratulations again to all of you. Okay. I, I wonder if we might have those of you who'd like to self-identify as the people who made it happen, come on up so we can have a, uh, a picture. Come on up, please. Paul? To sort of jockey around so we can see you here. Okay, looking right here. Once again, right here. Okay, once more. Excellent. Very good. Thank you. Mark is working. Mark, come on. I have one other bill, if I might, please. Uh, this is ESHB 1903, has to do with the Job Development Fund. Uh, the sponsor is Mark Ericks. Thank you, Mark. Congratulations. The bill is intended to help Washington communities attract new or expanded business by creating what's to be called the Job Opportunity Fund. It's an opportunity to provide grants to local governments to improve their infrastructure, create new jobs, and spur economic growth. The grants can be awarded to local communities whose proposals show evidence that the assistance will directly stimulate community and economic development by creating new jobs or keeping existing jobs. The maximum grant available from this fund for any single project is $10 million and may not exceed 33% of the total cost of the project. However, the non-state portion of the total project cost may include cash, the value of the real property acquired for the project, and in-kind contributions. Again, a, a visionary effort on behalf of the legislature to make sure that we're keeping our economy going literally everywhere in the state. Congratulations, Mark, and thank you. Come on, let's come in a little closer, please. Okay. Looking right here. Once again, sir, can you in the back? Can you come out this? Okay, excellent. Thank you. Smile here. Once more, right here. Very good. Very good. Mark? Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let us celebrate. What a great day, and I thank you again for being a part of this very historic day. Congratulations. Congratulations.